do you think in terms of his what will you remember him for in terms of his time at the club positively or will you is it too soon to look back like that I, th- I think there's a there's a mixture really obviously he came to us in two th- at the end of 2010 like you said and, and, and basically witness had fitted the criteria we just needed that say so that we were going to be in Super League so his job really was to build a Super League team which is not really a lot in 2011 2012 it the club did what they wanted, what they, what they told the fans it would happen. 2012, we finished bottom, but because of licensing, we then built, and then obviously 2013, we we got better. 2014 was we finished eighth, and, and we had a good season. Then obviously 2016, which people are saying was our better season. Yeah, we finished seventh, but in the playoffs, we only won two games out of them seven. Yeah, and that, it that it was towards the back end of that season that this run of defeats had started. Obviously, we started well at the beginning of the season, managed to get in the top eight, but that rut had already been gotten into and we were starting to lose them games and get more and more defeats and obviously Brown left at the end of it. I think the one thing that he's got, he's done well, is is bring the kids in. I think the the youth system we've got down here is really, really good and we're bringing a lot of kids in and I, I think that's really good for the game. I think that's really good for the club because there's a club that can't match the salary cap and spend that amount of money because we haven't got the revenue coming in. I think that's one thing that Bet and the team down there have done really, really well with the other coaching staff that have been there, like Brett Hodgson and stuff in the past. It it's 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 done really, really well. Do you see Betts as having played a, a key role in that? I mean, you're probably the best player that he's brought through during his his tenure is Matt Whitley, who plays in the same position Betts played in. So you'd expect there's been some help, helpful advice dished out there. Yeah, Matt Whitley's a really good player. Uh, he's uh, he's one of the success stories, but there's a, there's a few others that have come through as well who are playing well. You've got Danny Walker, obviously, the 18-year-old hooker, who I, th- I feel he's just not been getting the game time to whether they're trying to protect him. But then you've also got the Chapel Hall brothers. You've got Brad Walker and John Johnson have also come through. And it's that, BBC that's news my, moment. Yeah, my <laughs> getting in on the act with his guns. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I feel that it's got a lot to do with everybody at the club. I think the club, we've always had this culture over the last couple of years as one club and we're all there. I think that's been established. Yeah. I do, I do feel, in a way, I do feel sorry for Betts because he's. it's all well and good having that youth team coming through and the kids coming through to play, and it's great to see him pulling on a witness jersey and them being witness lads and stuff. But you also need that investment, and I think that's where he's not been backed and he's not been supported by the board and everything else that's been going on behind closed doors. We don't know where the money for Brown went to. We don't know what investment's coming into the club. We don't really market very well. Our shirt sponsors beat the scrum this year. Brilliant thing that they're doing. But what money does that bring into the club? We're advertising a week before a game for yeah. for match sponsors for the game. Now that's not very good if we're still asking a week before for a sponsor for a game against Leeds. You want that investment so that the the team can be developed on and brought through. And I think that's where we've been lacking of the especially the last two seasons. That lack of investment is costing the team on field, and then Bet is obviously having to to play with yeah. what he got. Do you think if Betts had... Because uh, Betts' stock was quite high a year, about a year or so ago. There was still, you know, people remembering the good times, um, mitigating some of the bad times through injury and loss of key personnel. And um, it was in the England setup and those sorts of things. His stock was quite high. And, and probably if he'd have left at the, at the end of last season even, you, you probably would have been looking at it, his time as a successful time. He'd established a Super League a, a Super League club that was in pretty good setting. Your crowds hadn't fallen off a cliff like they have this year and your um and and you play you you'd got a continuity in the squad and there was room in the cap to invest more if the owners and men with the with the money um wanted to to do those things. Do you think because when you're tying the, the losing run at the end of 2016, the fact that you were bottom last year and the fact that you're bottom now, that that means that he's, he's probably left you in a similar position as he, as he found you, a, a club on on the edge of Super League comfortable status. I, I think if he'd, have, if he'd have left and said, look, I feel I've took 
the club as far as you, as I can and I've not got the resources and left. Maybe he would have been looked at differently, but then would he have been looked at as a failure? Would people have turned around and said, well, why are you leaving? Yeah. Well, kind of why can't you shit. Take, yeah, why can't you take us to another level? I think in some aspects he's been made a little bit of a scapegoat for this. I know we're not performing. I know we're not playing well. And I've been saying for the past 12 months, maybe it's time for him to leave. But there's deeper things going on at that club that the fans don't know about. And I think he's just been, I think, whether the board have turned around and said, well, let's get a bet, it gets the fans off the back for a little bit. I'm not too sure that'll happen. I think there'll still be fans calling for some more heads. I think James really is one of the candidates that people are wanting to get out the club. Well, that neatly sort of takes us on to what's going to happen next for, for Witness, really. So, um, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about what's going to happen next for Dennis Betts. But what's going to happen next for Witness, as we know, is... Um, Cummins is in as the interim coach. He will be his first head coaching in rugby league since he was Bradford. Um, he did an, an okay job at Bradford in very, very difficult circumstances. Um, I'm hopeful that, that doesn't mean the same circumstances he's been because of that experience. Obviously, been at the club this season so far. He's been put in charge on an interim basis, but do you think Francis Cummins is going to be the man for the long term, or do you think? Do you think there's an open door to that, or do you think the the really just this is just a, a holdover position until someone else is identified? And do you think they'll be looking to identify someone at the end of this regular season to take you through the qualifiers, or do you think it's more going to be a permanent position will be looked at for next year? I think they'll they'll keep coming until the end of the season and then take stock in the close season and try and get somebody in. I don't think there'll be any rush to get anybody else in. Uh, We've got to give Cummins a chance. We don't know how much input he's actually had into the team. I know he's been he's uh, been there for this this season with bets, but how much of a, an input has he had? Maybe it will change things. We've just got to wait and see now. Uh, long term, I think we, like I said, I think we'll wait till the end of the season to see where we are because I don't think anybody would come into the club yeah. at the moment. bottom of the league, six points, not looking good. I think we're we're going to be in the qualifiers. I can't see us producing the form to get us out of it. And the qualifiers this year are going to be really, really tough. So I think anybody that be being looked at for the coaching would be saying, well, let's see where you are next year. Let's see what investment. Because obviously if somebody comes in, doesn't make a fist of it, it's not going to shine great on their coaching career. Uh, so I think like the the thing that you want to happen obviously is is Cummins guides you successfully through the qualifiers you play some attractive rugby along the way and yeah. and um, when you've got a, 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 as much fit players as you've got I mean Chris and Inu was great for you in the first month of the season he's coming back yeah. in, into fitness isn't he then the ideal scenario I suppose there is Cummins will have shown his worth and and you'd you'd keep him on otherwise I have concerns that you like you say you're not going to attract. It's certainly not going to be attracting a big name, so it'll either be someone who's failed consistently elsewhere, or someone who is an up and comer. Now, now there's people who are up and coming around in the lower in the League One position and stuff like that that maybe would jump at a, a witness job. So there is names out there. But um, yeah. in terms of the rest of the season, yeah, you're five points off Huddersfield, which doesn't sound like a lot with eight games remaining to play. Um, but you. Huddersfield this weekend in the Cup aside and and Catalans are, are the form teams aren't they and um, yeah. and so and and it's going to be one of that five if Witness do do get a burst of form under Cummins um, because Wakefield are eight points clear of you so I can't see you winning five games out of the eight remaining um, with all the best will in the world for you Um so really, it is you're playing for one spot in the eight, if at all, and it'd need a quick, immediate turnaround, wouldn't it, for that? But if, if Cummins did that, there's no arguments, is there? He's getting the job. No, our next two games are crucial. Catalan away and Salford away. They're our next two games, and they're vital for us. We need to try and get a result in them two games. The problem is Catalan have now started to hit a little bit of form. We weren't yeah. brilliant the other night against Huddersfield, but it was a shabby game. But they've hit a little bit, especially beating Leeds at home. Uh the week before and then we've got Salford who are going through a bit of a rut as well so yeah. we've got to look at these games now these next two and say these are where we need to start picking up points so you're pretty open minded aren't you in terms of the long term picture at the head coach position you're much more bothered about what what's likely to happen in the qualifiers against 
top teams like Toronto and Toulouse and maybe Lee and London uh, as, as people who might be in there too. Uh, interesting, just a, just a point to finish on, and I don't know your view on this. Dennis Betts has now been made the third favourite for the Wigan job at 7-1, to one, odds of 7-1. to one. Um, So to become head coach of Wigan from next year, that that's a, that's an interesting call. It's where he got his first coaching gig in very, very difficult, challenging and sad circumstances when uh, Mike Gregory had to step down because of his illness. So so that's an interesting one. Um, and that obviously me being a Wigan fan, I've got my eye on that. Dennis Betts was a great player for the club and um, he's a much more mature coach than he was in, I want to say, 2005? End of 2004 into 2005, I think, was when he had his, his go with us. So, um, yes. so that that you know, I'm I'm not I'm not entirely opposed to the idea. Two years ago, if you'd have given me Dennis Betts as our next coach, I would have taken it. Um, right now, I'm I'm in the hopeful bunch of Wigan fans who think Sean Edwards waiting until after the 2019 Rugby Union World Cup to make his triumphant return to Wigan. Dennis Betts wouldn't be a bad holding pattern for next year. I certainly don't think. <laughs> I think that would be the only way to get a job. I think I think they may well be looking for Edwards after the world, the Rugby Union World Cup, and they're going to need someone for that year to fill the gap type of thing. And who's going to come in for just a year and where the bets decides that's for him? But I'm not sure. I think uh, Wigan need somebody a little bit better than Betts. I, I think Betts is probably at a place at the moment where he's, he's probably needs some time away from the game. He's had it tough. He's, he's been here for eight years. He's Over the last two, three years, he's been getting a lot of pelts off the fans and maybe just needs to go away for a little bit, take stock of everything and then come back with a, with a clean type of slate and, and get back on the horse, so to speak. Good stuff. I think that's a really good point to, to leave it on. Um, thanks for joining me. Paul not a problem it's been uh, been nice to get some things off my chest about my uh, beloved witness Vikings <laughs> good stuff good stuff thanks for listening to this third SLP short if you want more SLP in your life you can find us at Super League Pod on Twitter and Instagram facebook.com forward slash Super League Pod or you can email us superleaguepod at gmail.com you can get more SLP content on our blog which you can find at superleaguepod.com there is a new article up there this week about the cup double header from regular co-host Alan Cale. You can also find the main weekly show and subscribe through Spreaker, iTunes or YouTube and on the Podcast Addict app. You can also find us on the Leadcast Android app along with some other top RL listens. We want to thank you for listening and until you hear from us again, keep enjoying and supporting the greatest game of all, Rugby League. <laughs>